Here we'll discuss nested quantifiers. So if a predicate has more than one variable, each variable has to be bound by a different quantifier. When we say a logical expression with more than one quantifier is said to have nested quantifiers. And as long as all the variables are bound, this is still a proposition. So here are some examples. For all x, there exists a y such that p of x, y. In this case, x and y are both bound, so this is a proposition. Another example, for all x, p of x, y. In this case, x is bound, but y is free, so this is not a proposition. In the last one, there exists a y and there exists a z such that t of x, y, z. In this case, we can see that x is free, so this is not a proposition either. So let's consider a scenario where the domain is a group of people who are all working together on a project. We're going to let m be m of x, y means x sent an email to y. So now let's consider for all x and for all y, m of x, y. In English, this means everyone sent an email to everyone. So the statement for all x and for all y, m of x, y is true if for every pair x and y, m of x, y is true. And this includes the case that x is equal to y. So if this statement is true, everyone sent an email to everyone else and they sent an email to themselves. The statement for all x and for all y, m of x, y is false if there's any pair that causes this to be false. So even if there's a single individual who did not send himself or herself an email or a single individual that didn't directly communicate with one other person, this would be false. Now let's look at this proposition. There exists an x and there exists a y such that m of x, y. So in English, it's just there's a person who sent someone an email. So this is true if there's a pair x and y in the domain that causes it to evaluate to true. So as long as one email was sent, this statement would be true. So in particular, this is true even if a single individual sent themselves an email. It's evaluated to false if for all pairs x and y cause m of x, y to evaluate to false. So the only way for this to be false is if there were absolutely no emails sent between group members or from a member to themselves. So a quantified expression can contain both types of quantifiers, like their existent x for all y, m of x, y. And these are always applied from left to right. So our statement, there exists a x for all y, m of x, y, means there is a person who sent an email to everyone. Switching quantifiers is going to change the meaning of this. If we move the for all to be first and have for all x, there exists a y, this means every person sent an email to someone. So the order is very important. So in determining if something is true or false, it's useful to think of this as a game. So we'll have two players compete to set the statement's truth value. One player will be the existential player, the other player is the universal player. And the variables are set from left to right in the expression. So we have this table. The existential player wants to select values for existentially bound variables. Universal player wants to select variables for universally bound variables. The existential player tries to make the expression true, whereas the universal player tries to make the expression false. So if the predicate is true after all variables are set, then the quantified statement is true. The predicate is false after all the variables are set, then the quantified statement is false. So let's consider this statement. For all x, there exists a y such that x plus y is equal to zero. The universal player will go first since the universal quantifier comes first in this statement. And whatever value they choose for x, the existential player can select y to be negative x, so the sum will always be zero. So the existential player can always succeed. It doesn't matter what the universal player picks for x, the existential player can just pick the negative of that. So this is always true. Now let's switch the order. Since the existential comes first, 
the existential player would go first. They'll select a value for x. And regardless of what they choose, the universal player can find some value of y that causes it to be false. Since we have to pick x first, the universal player can de determine a false value. So for example, if x is an integer, then y is equal to negative x plus 1 is also an integer, and x plus y is equal to 1, which is not 0. So the universal player can always win, and this statement will always be false.